Ratio, new Adobe XD update. We're gonna be talking about master components and component overrides in this video, and uh, it's gonna be a good one. Hey guys, you're watching Danski, the place to be, of course, to develop your creative skills. And in this tutorial, I'm gonna walk you through the new feature in Adobe XD, master components and component overrides. So recently there was an update for Adobe XD. It's free to download for Mac and PC if you want to have a go yourself. And this update, well, it made some pretty significant changes. And one of those changes we're gonna focus on today is all about master components and component overrides. So we're gonna jump to the screen now and uh, well, we'll just get cracking with the tutorial. Rightio, so you can see I have an artboard here. It's kind of uh, a real world project I'm actually working on, planning out a course. Pretty, uh, pretty exciting stuff. And Adobe XD has really come in handy, especially with this latest update, for not only just planning out the course, but making style related changes across a large amount of content. Um, so this is just one artboard. There are many more on the actual document. And it, this allows me to style it really, really easily. So before we talk about master components, we need to learn where they came from. So originally, components, as they're now called, they were known as symbols. So symbols are gone, they've been renamed to components, and they come with a lot more flexibility now. So originally, a symbol, you might have a button, a logo, an icon, whatever it was, you could make it as a symbol, reuse it through your entire document like 100 times, and then if you made a change to any instance of that symbol, it would update through the entire document. Pretty cool, right? Like huge time saver. But the problem came if you wanted to edit just one instance. So maybe it was like one button you want to make a bit wider and a bit taller, or you just had like that one little thing you wanted to change, but it then updates all the buttons to make them all a bit taller and wider. And that's like, nah, that's not what you want. But then you could ungroup that and make that one button not a symbol, but then any changes to the others, well, they don't get passed on to that one that you've unmade as a symbol. Ah, but now we have master components and component overrides that enable us to kind of do this and still keep everything as a symbol or a component as it's now known. So the way that we created a symbol before was we would select something on our artboard. We can select both of these bits of text, for example, right click, and now we've got make component. So we'll make a component out of this. And you can see over here, this is listed as component 54. We could uh, rename that by double clicking. We'll go title, something a little bit more descriptive. And you'll see up here in the top left corner, we have a green diamond. Now this indicates that this component is a master component. In fact, if you ever create a new component, it will automatically become the master by default. So. If I go and create a copy of this over here, you can see this has no green diamond. And if I need to find out where the master is in my document, I can click on any component, right click and go to edit master component. And it automatically just zooms me back to where my master component is located in the document. And then I can go and make some changes. So if I wanted to change, for example, make this a bit bigger, uh, make this bigger, we'll change the font to good old times. It will propagate those changes to uh, every other instance of that component in the document. And of course I could go and change the text to anything I want. So it's less about content, but it propagates any style related changes. So color, uh, width, size, height, font, width, height, size. Yeah, it's just any changes that are style related, they get propagated to every other version. But if I go and change this one, for example, you see, I can just, I can do anything to these ones, but because I'm not changing the master, that's called a component override. So uh, this is a pretty terrible example. So I'm gonna go back and we'll go back to the, the real world example that I actually have here. So at the moment, I've got this as a component and I've got this listed over here, but because this was made on a previous version of XD where we didn't have master components or anything, I think this was actually a symbol. What I do is I right click and I go edit master component, but there is no master component because I haven't defined one yet. So if I click edit master component, you can see it creates one for me. I've got that little diamond up there and I could integrate this into my document or maybe I could leave this over here somewhere on like, a, like an assets panel where I can go and quickly and easily edit it. But now if I were to go and let's say go to this top one here and I wanna make this a bit narrower. In fact, I want to make all of them narrower 
just so they kind of finish where the text does on each one. But not the bottom five, we'll leave those as they are. If I go and change the master, you can see all of them get that same update. The master is the master and it will propagate those changes to everything else, unless I've already done a component override. So I'm changing the width here, but I've already overridden the width. Remember, style related properties, I've already overridden that. So it won't actually go and uh, do anything with that. Adobe XD will respect that I've made an override and it will leave it as is. But if I go and change the text, well, I've not overridden that style property anywhere, so it's gonna propagate that across everything. But then if I want this top one to have teeny tiny text like this, really teeny tiny, and I wanna make the font bold, and uh, I'm just making this up as I go along, uh, pink. If I, <laughs> if I go and change this font now, you can see it does everything else, but the, the component override that I've made, it will leave that as it is. If I then go and change the height, yeah, so it will only affect the ones where I've uh, not messed around with any of those attributes. So I think height and width might be kind of packaged together, but if I show you like a more useful example of this rather than me just making things look terrible, it might be like, oh, okay, I just want to change the color here. I want to go for like a, like a dark mode, something like that. Make these gray, click on the background. Do, 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 there we go. And we've got a, a dark mode version. Now this is one artboard. Imagine there's a hundred artboards. In fact, when I'm actually planning this out, the real world version has a lot of artboards and I can make these style related changes that overrides very quickly. Honestly, it's like, it's so helpful. Now we've got our master over here. Something else we can also do is right click and select reveal component in assets and it will highlight where that is. So I don't have to kind of go searching through all my components or I can right click on this and go highlight on canvas and it shows me where they all are. Or if I kind of just mess up another one of these and do that uh, and I've gone, what have I done? This is terrible. I need, to, I need to get back to the original. I can just right click and go reset to master component and it will it will put it back to what it was before. Now, there's another little trick that I've learned that I'm gonna share with you now. Um, when you create these and you work on a document, sometimes if you go to the layers panel, uh, you get a lot of components that they, they have their name from the components panel if you rename them, but sometimes you'll find with a big complex document, you end up with component, 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 component one, component 52, as you can see here, uh, lots of random names. If you want to just update all of these names in an instant, what you can do is go to your asset panel and what is it, lesson. So if we just change this by double clicking or you can also right click and go to rename. All you've got to do is rename this, even if you put it back. So we'll rename it to lessons and then we'll go and put it back to lesson. Just a simple act of renaming it. Go to your layers panel and you can see it updates that change uh, to all of your layers. So you can rename them all in one go. That's pretty useful. And there we go. There's a look at the new feature, master components and overrides. Guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you've got any questions or comments, you know what to do, drop those down below. But as always, like this video if you enjoyed it. Take care and I'll see you next time.